Good afternoon, everyone. This is North Carolina Prepper. And today, I want to talk about homemade desiccant. I think that's how it's pronounced. Moisture absorbers. Um, let's go over what this is. Basically, this is um, this is silica gel, which is commonly sold in the cat litter. Uh, it's very cheap. Uh, I bought four pounds for <clears throat> about four dollars. For three ninety nine, four dollars. So, it was very, very cheap to do that. Me. Now, basically, <coughs> excuse me. Basically, silica gel is the easiest material to make your own homemade desiccant pack. For basically, for being you know frugal, um, you can basically get this at most craft stores or, in this case, pet stores or places that sell pet stuff. Um, they sell it for drying flowers, but I find that's a much higher, higher uh, grade, so it's like a powder. <clears throat> so I don't use that. I like the cat litter because of the actual size of the uh, crystals. Um, basically, silicon gel absorbs about 40% of its own weight in water. Um, once it absorbs this amount of water, it can no, it's no longer capable of absorbing moisture out of the air. But a relatively simple regeneration process to remove the water from the desiccant by regenerating the silica gel returns it back to its natural state of being able to chemically uh, absorb water from the air, or hydroscopically absorb water from the air. Now, <clears throat> pill bottles and similar containers, which I'll go into these here in a minute, um, make very good home desiccant containers. I fill the bottles um, or similar container with silica gel, and then I'll put one or two coffee filters over it and just throw this in the safe or whatever. You know, put a rubber band on it and seal it up. I don't have it open now because I'm going to put it away. And just leave it sealed like this. But if you put the coffee filters on it or whatever, if it's knocked over, it's not a problem. It's not going to spill everywhere. Um, it's a good idea to put a label on the side with the weight of the homemade desiccant, or home pack desiccant, I should say, which uh, will read, will read its weight when it needs to be regenerated. So this is three ounces. That's what I need for a... Um, uh, it was about a five cubic foot safe. Um, um, when I when this when this weight gets to um, one hundred thirteen point four grams, right now it's at eight hundred forty. That's that's dry recharged. When it gets to one hundred thirteen point four, it needs to be uh, recharged, and that's uh, eight hundred forty gram or uh, bleh, sorry, eighty four grams times 1.35 gives me that math of 113.4 grams to recharge it. Not 840, um, 84, sorry, my mistake. <clears throat> uh, silica gel absorbs water from the air, which is said. It increases the weight of the gel. There's two weight measurements that generally should be taken when making homemade desiccant packs. The first is the weight of the container when empty. The second is the weight of the container when filled with gel, in this case, 3 grams, plus the container. Um, subtracting the weight of the container will uh, give the weight of the silica gel. Multiplying this weight by 1.35 will give you the weight of the gel when it's almost full of water. Add this weight to the empty container, which I did here, and the final weight should be marked in the bottle, which I did here, and that will indicate when it should be recharged. In this case, 113.4 grams is when this thing is recharged. When the gel is near the point it can no longer absorb water, it needs to be regenerated or recharged. The regeneration process is actually quite simple. You take the gel from the container, place it on a baking sheet. The baking sheet should only be used for regenerating homemade desiccants because not all silica gel is food grade safe. Now, they say this is pure gel, but generally blue has, I think, cobalt in it. And that's really not good for you. It's a certain level of carcinogen. I don't know what level, but I don't want it in me. But this isn't the color change. I put it in water. It doesn't change color. I don't know why there's blue crystals in it, but the package said 100% silica gel. Okay, so you place it on a baking uh, baking sheet. Uh, you heat the oven, your oven to about 300 degrees. Place it on the baking sheet for three hours. Once you remove it, allow it to cool. Put it back in the container or your altoid stand, or whatever. And um, it'll function like new. It's pretty much good to go. Now, let's talk about 
points of reference here, so we're clear on things. One unit, uh, one unit, will protect a cube, two cubic foot area. <coughs> Most effectively used in multiple areas scattered throughout your safe, your toolbox, your drawer, your safety deposit box, whatever. Now, a two cubic foot area is a 12 by 12 by 24 area, or roughly the size of an old foot locker or sea chest. Two tablespoons, it's about what's in here, is one ounce or 28 grams. That's one unit. A unit is one gram. Okay, so a 50 caliber ammo can, which is what a lot of people are going to use this for, is 11 by 5.5 times 7 inches. This gives us 423.5 inches. I'm going to add a chart. I'm not going to go through all the measurements here, but I'm going to chart in the notes of this video. That's going to tell you how much gel you should use. Or silicon. And it's going to be based on several factors. But this is going to give you a basic estimate of how much you should use in a sealed container, etc. So I'll add that in the notes here on the video. I'm not going to go through it now. But a gun safe that has 6.45 uh, cubic foot, which is an average safe, small safe, about eight guns, would hold three ounces of desiccant. That's 84 grams. So I see these things like safe dryers that are, oh, 40 grams. Well, 40 grams is roughly about a little over three cubic feet. And a small safe is 6.5 cubic feet. So you have to recharge it a lot in a safe in a humid environment. Now, the most effective way of removing moisture is with heat on silica gel. It has a very high melting temperature, I'm told 1600 degrees Celsius. Um, it loses its uh, chemical bond water through hydroscopic properties if heated above 300. So, you heat it low and do it longer. And what that will do is requires it less. it requires more time but it doesn't degrade the ability of the silica gel. In a conventional oven, what I would do, or what I have done, is I spread the gel about a half inch in a shallow pan, baking pan, cookie sheet, whatever. I heat the oven to 150 degrees Fahrenheit, and the gel, I let it set for about four hours. You want you want the lowest heat you can. I, I've known people who have also thrown it in, in uh, food dehydrators, too. See uh, the package here? They throw them in food dehydrators. I think these are 16th of an ounce, so you need quite a few of those for an ammo can. Um, it, it's going to depend on the, the amount of moisture in the, in the gel and the type of gel. But roughly, four hours pretty much does it. Um, I haven't done it personally, but I've heard of people using the microwave to dehydrate the gel. And the instructions they gave me were you put it in a shallow glass pan, no more than a half inch tall or a half inch deep uh, gel. You heat it on high for two minutes, cool the gel for one minute, and then repeat about ten times until dry. Now, I want to talk about my packaging here. Um, I've used Altoid cans and just poke holes in the top and you know small holes in the drill, and then close that and put it in a drawer or whatever. I've used these in ammo cans. Um, you have to put a few in, so I don't. I really don't care if you use those. And this is what the gel itself looks like. Let me make sure it's on camera. Right, that's the gel itself. So it's it's relatively big gel sizes. So a small hole is not going to rupture your uh, or go everywhere. Um, what I have here, I think, this is more my scale hold. Yeah, it's 3.7 grams right there. I mean, you can't see it. I'll take this, and um, <clears throat> while I'm recharging the other stuff, because I don't want to go in between times, I'll, I'll go ahead and package this up like this and vacuum seal it. Then, when I'm ready to use it, my knife here, my poker, I'll poke a metric ton of holes in this. Just poke all these holes. Not big enough for the gel to get out, but big enough for the air to go in and pass through. And I'll poke a bunch of these in there. Now, <clears throat> you could also put it in a sock and throw it in there. Get a big safe, 
or a big area, that's what I would do. Is I'd take a sock and fill a sock up with this and tie it off and just throw it in there. Somewhere it won't spill or it's safe or whatever. <clears throat> now, when I actually go to put this in a safe or whatever, I'll pull the top off this and I'll put the coffee filters on. I usually use two filters just to prevent any accidents and I'll just rubber band it up on there and I'm good to go. And this this lasts a long time. North Carolina is a pretty humid environment, but I think I get about five months out of three ounces of silica gel. 100% silica gel. Now, <clears throat> there are other uses or other desiccants that you can use. Um, I don't happen to have any here, but let's talk about them anyway. Take a drink here. Um, calcium sulfate also known as the mineral gypsum and basically it's drywall um, calcium sulfite is a natural occurring mineral it's produced by dehydration of gypsum CaSO4 it's chemical stable but it doesn't relatively release this absorb moisture it kind of holds on to it it bonds to it and basically it only holds about 10 percent of its weight it can be regenerated but it's a pain in the butt to do it so let's go over that process now, the reason, before I go over that, the reason I talk about this is in Kearney's fallout meter, which I'm going to do a video on later, but basically, when the shit hits the fan, and let's say there's a nuclear accident, or we have another uh, Chernobyl, oops, sorry, you know, oops, and, and everybody gets irradiated, you don't have time, if you don't have gypsum or whatever, or I mean, if you don't have silica gel, you need a desiccant quick to make a fallout meter. Um, what you can do, or what Kearney says, God, I'm getting confused here, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm kind of excited, I got all this stuff going on today. Uh, Kearney mentions it as nuclear war survival skills, it makes a so-so desiccant, and you're better off with a more suitable choice, but an emergency drywall will get the job done. Now, you can't just go ahead and punch a hole in your wall and take a couple of cubes of it out. You can't do it that way. Kearney says gypsum, dry gypsum is not a drying agent. Dry gypsum. To drive the water out of gypsum molecules and produce a drying agent and a hydrate, I guess that's how you pronounce it, you heat the gypsum in an oven at its highest temperature, which should be above 400 degrees for one hour. Heat the gypsum after placing it in a small pieces no more than two inches deep in a pan or heat the above pieces in fire for 20 minutes or more in a pan and you need to heat it until it's a dull glowing red so and then let it cool and then you can throw it in your can or you know or your ammo box or whatever if, if for some reason you can't get this then you can do that or get gel you can do that another option would be to, is to use wood uh, wood itself is a desiccant you need to heat it in the oven until it's bone dry. And I mean bone dry, more than usual. And then you put it in the container and seal it up. Wood will basically suck up any available moisture. Um, <clears throat> wood soaks, I believe it is 14% of its weight in moisture, depending on the species. Uh, woods with coarse, open grains work the best. I'm not aware of what temperature you need to, to uh, make it release or shed its moisture, or shed its water. It might be low, or it might take a lot of time. I don't know. I, I do about 150 degrees and bake it for a while. Uh, you're going to need to do some experiments to find on that because I don't know. And I wouldn't really want to rely on it heavily, but if I got to do it, I got to do it. So, this is my homemade desiccant packs for shit hits pan or any type of emergency. Um, this is North Carolina Prepper. Uh, please rate and subscribe. If you have a better idea or a comment or something, Please leave it and let me know. My mind is open. If you can do it better or you know a better way to do it or you've heard something, I'll look it up and I'll research it and maybe we can find a better way to do this. Um, like I said, I'm open to, uh, to information and stuff like that. So please have a very great day. Stay safe and, you know, have a great day. North Carolina Prepper out.